vehicle. Of course, I might have a bias, but I thought it said vehicle. So I, I go outside uh, with my business partner, and he's like, no, I think he said Bitcoin. And so we look at his phone, we see Bitcoin.org, we're like, ah, they have nothing to do with our startup, let's keep it moving. Well, a little bit later, I see the price goes up, and every, as everyone, and I said, well, well, maybe Bitcoin is real. It's the price is high, it's an all-time high, it was like 200 bucks or something crazy. And I was like, maybe it's something real. So I went and actually went back to Bitcoin.org and downloaded the white paper. Now, I have a degree in finance, and I am a software developer by trade. And there is no greater marriage of those two disciplines than Bitcoin. But it wasn't that that really got me intrigued. What got me really intrigued about Bitcoin is what I saw was freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. So my talk today, what I'm gonna say is, is that Bitcoin is the path to freedom and it is the path to a real network which is the human network. Because when I saw that freedom, what I realized that freedom was from was from an oppressive system. See, I'm an African American, right? And in my country, things have happened to us, and you got us, I can't even compete with Africa, but you, things have happened to us that I understood and noticed that a lot of it came because of the financial system that we had. Things that we had, wealth that we were able to build was taken, was taken from us, even after Reconstruction. So in, in Reconstruction, what that means is after slavery, the slaves got together and were able to build things with nothing, from nothing, from, from scratch. And those things they were able to build, guess what happened? They still got taken from them. Still got blown up. Still, if you've ever, ever heard of the Tulsa massacres, right? So even if you go in, and in my mind, like, even if you go in and build from nothing and people didn't want to have access, to you and didn't want to work with you, but you were able to still build wealth, you could still get it taken from you. So there had to be a better way. There had to be a better system. So when I saw Bitcoin, what I noticed was is that I had the freedom not only to program my own money, to send my own money wherever I wanted to send it, hold my money, and no one could take it from me. No one could take my wealth. That freedom, right, is being seen so prevalent right now here in Africa. I, you don't understand how happy I am to be here. I have had great conversations with amazing people showing me how Bitcoin is providing more and more freedom to them in real time. In the United States and the Western world, Bitcoin for a lot of people is just a way to diversify their portfolios. That's not interesting to me. Bitcoin is another line on the balance sheet. It's not that interesting to me. Because Bitcoin was made for freedom. The peer-to-peer the -peer currency that it was talking about. See, if anybody at all understands currency, I call currency the current that connects each and every one of us. Because we've all agreed that this thing is allowed to move from person to person to person to person to person. But the crazy thing about this currency is that nobody controls it. So if no one controls it, if no one can tell you what to do with it, then what does that do? It makes you move one more step towards freedom towards independence, towards sovereignty. See, the most important network in Bitcoin is not necessarily the nodes that are set up, that are connected to one another. The most important network is you. It's me, Felix, a friend I met a very long time ago from Berlin. Adam, who just put my picture up on the screen. Right? Paul, the amazing magician. The reason why I have no slides is because I wanted to connect with the community of people and talk about the people here. Talk about who I have met here because this is the most important part. People from Ghana, from Cameroon, from United States of America, from Kentucky, or Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're all connected. Every last one of us are connected on this earth. And all Bitcoin is a tool to represent that connection. It is a tool that allows us to now have free trade amongst different countries without having to worry about sanctions. Many of these sanctions are put on countries and individuals in the countries have done nothing to, re to receive those sanctions. I had a buddy who was uh, selling, now see I love flip flops. He was selling shoes and sandals, 
Pakistan. You know how hard it would be for me to send money to Pakistan from the United States? Just me getting sandals would probably put me on some OFAC list. Am I right? You know how ridiculous that is? But this guy makes amazing sandals. So how would I get sandals from him without Bitcoin? We have to remember that everything that we are doing, every single step along the way, is really about us talking about a new tool for humanity. During the time of colonialism, things were kept away from certain people. Right? Information. There was asymmetric information. What does that allow? Control. People who have the information control those they do not. Get the printing press, people can read books. Helps out a lot. Communication. Same thing. Whenever you have asymmetric situations, the people that have more wind up controlling you. In this system, we know. I have heard every story about how governments here in Africa and our government in the United States, let's not get it twisted, are manipulating the money supply. Much to the chagrin of the individuals who do the most to work for it. That, in the end and of itself, is a connector that lets all of us know that we all have the same types of hardships. We all are dealing with the same types of situations. They might be a little bit greater in some places, a little bit less, but we all can understand. And that understanding allows us to connect one to each other, and Bitcoin helps to solve some of those issues. But it doesn't solve all of our issues. Because what good is Bitcoin if we still hate each other? What good is Bitcoin if we can't get to the United States of Africa, as my man said yesterday? If you can't start to move Bitcoin from Ghana to the Congo to South Africa, there was a brother I was talking to, I don't even see him here today, but he was talking about the United States of Africa. And he's really pushing for that. Because he says that the borders were completely created by colonialism. It's like Africa was a complete, entire continent of tribes. And somebody came in and put in false borders and had people start fighting with one another. What happens when the whole world gets rid of all borders and we are in a position where we can all be connected not by political thoughts, but by the fact that we all can connect through Bitcoin. How many people here feel like you're more free because you have Bitcoin? No, really raise your hand. I want to see. Anybody who's not raising their hand and has Bitcoin, you're not, you're not understanding Bitcoin's whole idea of freedom. Because that's what it is, you guys. Every Satoshi you buy moves you one, one more step towards freedom. But I have a question. You all know Harriet Tubman? You ever heard of Harriet Tubman? I know we're in Africa, so Harriet Tubman. Hey, Harriet Tubman, she was an abolitionist. Her and Frederick Douglass are my biggest heroes. Harriet Tubman helped free a lot of slaves. And the, the, reason why the reason why they're my heroes is because imagine what it takes for a person who gets themselves to freedom to turn around and go try to get more people free. All of you have to start thinking like Harriet Tubman. The only way this Bitcoin adoption is going to work is that all of you feel free. That's why I told you to raise your hand. Everybody's like, I'm more free because of Bitcoin. But how many other people have you went to go get free? What type of person does it take to be, become free and care enough about the people on the left and on the right of them to help them also become more free. That's what this is about. That's what my talk is about. We have got to continue to spread Bitcoin. We have got to show people how Bitcoin makes them more free. We, all of us together, are responsible for that message. Because if you really love your friends and your family and you have something good and you do not tell them about it, is that love. Now, I understand that Thanksgiving in, in the United States, I don't know what they put in here, people gonna give you crap. They go, oh, about this Bitcoin stuff, this is so stupid, your Uncle Earl's gonna come in, he's gonna tell you he got some dog coin or something. But you have to fight through all of that because we have to teach people about the freedom 
that Bitcoin deals, not the speculative nature, not the up and down, not the, the, the balance sheet inquiry, right? Our entry, I should say. We have to teach them about the freedom. And so, the human, all of us in here, this human network that we have created with Bitcoin, all of us in here have a responsibility to help get more people free. The thing I love about Africa is that you guys have embraced Bitcoin from its from the tangible nature because it actually solves problems. And whenever I, I say this stuff all the time, but nobody listens to me because they have not been here. I talked to what's heard, it's a My man heard it. Heritage is black Bitcoin billionaire. He's a member, I met him almost two years ago. Heritage has been telling me about the issues in Africa. I try to tell other people about it, they don't listen. They don't realize that this is real. For you all here, Bitcoin is real. For people in other places, Bitcoin is just some yeah. plaything. Or just a way for them to make a little bit more fiat, cash out and get a yacht or a Lamborghini. Bitcoin is about complete, utter freedom. And the only way that we can all be free is that we all have to start moving toward a place of hyper-Bitcoinization outside of these tyrannical governments that basically create money to hold the people down. Martin Luther King said, I don't know, it's the truth of Martin Luther King, I've, I've heard my Angelo say it, and she said this, no one is free until we're all free. We have a lot of work to do. We all have a lot of work to do. We're not really free until everyone's free. And the moment we get to a system like Bitcoin that allows equal access, right, equal opportunity, out of the box, it's just out of the box. You make your own note, make your own wallet. I built a wallet in the hood. We didn't have books or anything. No books on how to build a wallet. I love chain code. I want, I want to work with chain code to try to bring some of that kind of education to the hood. We didn't have any of that. There were no books. The people who wrote the books, I met those people before they wrote the books. We didn't have anything about it. I had to go, I was reading freaking academic papers, trying to figure out what cryptography was. Right? Because nobody is going to bring the information to the places that you are in except for you. Because nobody's intentional about the people around you except you. You know who you love. You know who you want to be free. So whose responsibility is it to tell those people? How many people talk to their family about Bitcoin? <laughs> How many of your family members talk crazy to you back about Bitcoin? But that doesn't mean to stop. Because the same anti-fragility that we have in the Bitcoin network is the same anti-fragility we have in the human network. Every time Miles talks to somebody and they don't get it, here comes, here comes my man Paul. He's like, well, Miles didn't do it right, let me come and tell him. And then when Adam says it, or when Lazan says it, Every single one of us continues to keep hitting the nose with that information, with that information until at one point they understand how this is going to change their life. And not only their life, because once we all become free, just like with education, just like with communication, just like with information, you see what happens to the world at that point. The moment we have access, the moment everyone has the same access, equal access, things begin to move. Places begin to change. People like Chain Code come around and get people jobs that are going to change their lives forever. This is not just about money. This is about humanity. No one is free. No one is free. We got 32 seconds until we're all free. Let me say it one more time. No one is free until we're all free. Thank you.